CBS Sports presents the Los Angeles Rams versus the Chicago Bears. Hi, everybody. I'm Ben Scully, along with George Allen, and welcome to Soldier Field in Chicago. And, George, this is a different game for us. Yes, it is, Ben. The Bears' strength is their offensive line. They have a big, powerful offensive line. The Rams' strength is their defensive line and their entire defense. We'll find out about a weakness if there is one in the young quarterback, Jeff Rutledge, of the Rams. The Bears are going to blitz them in a passing situation. The two safeties are coming after them. And finally, you get to Walter Payton, and what do you think the Rams can do to stop this great running back? The Bears are going to have to get Payton going to win, and the Rams are going to have to keep Payton every down, two men on him. And each team comes in here five and five, and the playoffs are getting closer and closer. Well, the winner will have a good chance for the playoffs. And the loser? Very doubtful. Okay, let's go down to the field right now and the start of the Rams-Bears game from Soldier Field, Chicago. The temperature here, 34 degrees, a light breeze of nine miles an hour out of the south. The Rams losing the toss, and that means the Chicago Bears have now won the toss of the coin nine of 11 times. That might be some kind of an unusual record. So the Bears will receive the kickoff, and the Rams on the defensive working from right to left. That means for the Bears, we'll see Mike Phipps along with Walter Payton and Dave Williams. The wide receivers, Brian Bashnagel and Steve Schubert. But right now, as they go back, number 39 is Robin Earl, 80 is Watts going in the left corner, 23 is Walter Scheid, and up in front, 25 is Lonnie Perrin. So Frank Corral ready to kick it off, and this one's underway. Corral kicking it to Watts on the 10. Walter Scheid going around him to block and Watts out to the 20 and is hit by Harris, among others, and knocked out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. And that's where the Bears will put it in play. Taking a look now, Mike Phipps with Walter Payton and Dave Williams. The receivers, Ricky Watts the rookie, Brian Bashnagel, and the tight end, Mike Cobb. Up front, Albrecht and Jackson, Neal, Sorry, and Lick. And that, in appearance, would be one of the strengths of the Bears, that offensive line going head-to-head -head against the Ram defense. Young blood fanning Brooks and Dreyer, the front four. So it is first and ten from the Bear 23. In motion at Fashionable. And it'll be Dave Williams running into a pile, still on his feet, and gets across the 25. We gave you the Ram front four. Now we'll take a look at their linebackers. And, of course, a solid group they are. Jim Youngblood, Jack Reynolds in the middle, and Bob Brzezinski on the right side. The corners, Ellis Dwayne Osteen, along with Nolan Cromwell, is normally a safety. Then Dave Elmendorf and Eddie Brown. Second and seven for the Bears on their 26. Peyton. And Peyton gets out across the 30 to about the 31. He had to get to almost the 33-yard line. Walter Peyton, the leading ball carrier in each of his two previous starts against the Rams. He's averaged over 135 yards a start and five yards a carry against Los Angeles. There you see the rookie, and he's going to have a long day. Ricky Watts, the rookie out of Tulsa. Steve Largent, Howard Twilley preceded him into the league. Third and two for the Bears on their own 31-yard line. Out of the eye with Peyton Deep. Peyton with Williams blocking, and he did not get it. Jack Reynolds at the bottom along with Bob Brzezinski, so Peyton is stymie, George, and that'll do it for the Bears. Well, the Rams must stop 34 Peyton to win today. He's the guy they have to stop. They have to key him every down, both run and passes, and that's what they did on third and two. So punting now will be Bob Parsons. Parsons in his eighth year with the Bears. Only one FL punter has been with his current team longer. That's Mike Bragg in his 12th year with the Redskins. And deep is Eddie Brown. The punt is a line drive. Brown at the 40 and goes down at about the 43. However, down back on the 20-yard line is Parsons, and Parsons evidently really hit. No flag on the play, by the way. Here's Parsons. We'll take another look. Last week, they called this. Now, watch this. He kicks the ball. He gets it off, and now he's hit. After
after he kicked the ball. It's a, it's a, a judgment only. call, and he's warning the Rams. The referee is Dick Jorgensen, but of course for Parsons, he is really banged up. And not only is he banged up, the crowd is angry, and the Rams have excellent field position, first and 10 on the Los Angeles 44. Let's take one more look at that play. Well, this is a judgment call. If, if a man is blocked into the kicker, they don't call it. The official probably felt that he had the ball off, and it wasn't deliberate, so he didn't call it. Here's another angle of it. That's Joe That's Harris, Joe who Harris. was hit by yeah. a bear. Well, he was blocked into him. From that other angle, we saw that. And usually, they don't call that. Now, once in a while, we had a game then where they did call it. That's so it's, right. a, it's a judgment call. It'd be too bad if Parsons is injured on that because he's one of their top punters in the league and the Bears need him. That was close to being blocked and that's an interesting point about Parsons career. He has punted 517 times in eight years and he's had only four blocked but Neil Armstrong very much upset over the well, possibility of losing his punter. He was hit low and hard. It was almost like a clip. And Joe Harris is a very physical football player. He's, he's with the Rams because of his special team's ability. Doug Buffon had blocked Harris partially, and it was because of that block that the penalty was not called. There was no penalty because he was literally and figuratively blocked into the punter by Buffon. Anytime you're blocked into the punter, they very seldom call it. Of course, that small consolation to Parson and the Bears right now. If Parsons is unable to punt, backing him up, would be Ron Rydalch and Walter Payton, and Rydalch is banged up, so it might be that Walter Payton would have to do the punting for the Bears if Bob Parsons is unable to continue. Gosh, he, he looks like he's hurt. He can't walk off the field. That's a blow. It had the same effect as a clip, the way he was turned, so we would have to assume it is a knee injury. You know, the people in Southern California are mighty aware of all of the Ram injuries, but here in Chicago, the Bears have been chewed up. They've lost two wide receivers, a quarterback, two fullbacks, and for a while, a number one defensive player. All right, first and 10 on the Ram 44, Jeff Rutledge at the wheel, out of the eye with Cullen Bryant and Wendell Tyler. And it's Wendell Tyler. Tyler still going and slides to the 35. They'll mark it at the 37. Well, this is almost a duplication of last week's game against Seattle. Tyler broke one from the eye, a long run, almost scored the same thing here. Tyler's best set is the eye formation where you get him outside and he can use his feet. And Tyler playing with a bruised sternum. He was a doubtful starter, but there he is, an explosive first play. First and 10 on the Bear 37-yard line. Tyler with Dennis Hara in front. Hara blocking Fensick, and Tyler going out at the 30-yard line. Well, it, that last play, the Bears had no force, no containment. Nobody came across the line. And when you, when you don't force a guy like Wendell Tyler, he's going to make some yards. Taking a look at the Ram offense, Jeff Rutledge, the rookie out of Alabama, with Wendell Tyler and Cullen Bryant, the running backs. Ron Smith, Preston Denard, and the tight end is Terry Nelson. And up front for the Rams, Gravel and Hill, Saul, Hara, and Slater. So it is second and three on the Bear 30-yard line. Remember, they started on the Ram 44. on a draw and he gets the 20 yard line that almost well, looked like an option quarterback play you know, as he ran laterally the, the, the bear defense is fourth overall in the nfc they have a pretty good defense all it is is a straight handoff big hole at the point of attack so it is first and ten on the bear 21 yard line jeff rutledge has ron smith right preston denard left Elvis Peacock is in there with Wendell Tyler. Peacock on a draw decides to go outside and there's daylight and inside the 10 yard line knocked down by Virgil Livers. The Bears defense seems like they're inside conscious. There's nobody forcing from the outside and when the runner pushes off outside there's no force. There's no containment. Every play has been a big play for the Rams in this drive. 
First and goal on the bear seven yard line. So Rutledge the first time he gets his hands on the ball has moved the Rams well from his own 44 to the bear seven. Bryant and Tyler the running backs. And it is Tyler slowed down and dragged down at the 10. Osborne got him from behind and then Campbell hammered him along with Fencing. You know Ben 82 Alan Page is playing at about 220. He's been doing a lot of running a lot of marathon uh, type of running and you can blow him out of there at that weight. Now he's still a great football player and can still rush the passer. And there he is, number 82. Let's watch him. Alan Page. So it is second and goal from the 10. Cullen Bryant, Wendell Tyler. Play action fake to Tyler. Page from behind. And he just did get rid of the Page made the play. He took an outside rush. He's got that great speed and quickness. And he brought Rutledge down from behind. Made him, made him hurry the pass. Allen is 6'4", 228, 13 years out of Notre Dame. Just past the bar, so he is an attorney at large. In this situation, 82 and 68 like to run stunts. Osborne and Page. Third and goal on the 10. Motion is Preston Denard. Rutledge on his second pass play into the end zone. No good. Livers got his hands on it. It was intended for Drew Hill. Good coverage. Two little men going yeah. into the end zone for that one. And they and they did run a stunt. There's Page coming in, getting his hands up, making him throw it high. Livers, number 24, is the NFL's shortest defensive regular. He's five eight and a half. So now Frank Corral, who is eight for 16 in field goals, the spot by Nolan Cromwell will be at the 17. So it's a 27-yard field goal attempt. Alan Page has blocked 16 kicks in six years, so look out for number 82. The snap, the kick, it's good. And so the Rams, from their own 44, go 56 yards to get on the scoreboard with three points on that field goal from Frank Corral. He's 9 out of 17, Rams 3, and the Bears nothing. With 10 minutes and 2 seconds left to go in the first quarter, the Rams on a 27-yard field goal by Frank Corral leading 3 to nothing. Low line drive kickoff, Waldeshide in the end zone is going to take it out to the 20, still on his feet to the 26-yard line, and that's where the Bears will put it in play. First and 10 from their own 26. Duck in a couple of scores for you. Miami leading Baltimore, 13 to nothing at halftime. Still stinging from their game of Houston. Buffalo leading the Jets, 7-6 at halftime. Ben Parsons is moving around the sideline, so that's good news for the Bears. Whether he can kick or not remains to be seen. First and 10 on the Bear 26 yard line as Mike Phipps brings him out of the huddle. Peyton and Williams are running backs. Bashnagel is in motion to the right. Second man, Peyton. And stacked up at the line of scrimmage. It must be tough to be a marked man down there, George. It, ben, that, that's uh, putting it mildly. Every play, the defense is either overshifted or undershifted. You have all three of your linebackers keen on Peyton. The thing that Peyton does well today that our fans might want to watch is he cuts back. He's a great cutback runner, and he has such quickness that he can turn any play into a long gainer. So he just about got it back to the line of scrimmage. And it'll be second and ten. Watch his wide left, Bashnagel right. And Phipps is going to put it up. Faking to Latta, just did get away from Dreyer, pursued by Fanning, and throws it away, intended for Dave Williams. Well, the Bears, to win today, have to be able to run the football very well against this defense. They can't get in a passing situation where Phipps has to throw because they're playing into the Rams' strength. Now, here comes the Rams in with a nickel defense that they had so much success with last week against Seattle, dogging Zorn. 
The Rams and Denver are the only teams with two shutouts this year. The Rams have had 12 of them now in seven years, so their defense has really been the solid article of the ball club. Phipps looking left and throwing low, and a great catch by Schubert at the 40. Schubert picks up the first down for Chicago. That's the Rams are faking the nickel dog and they come out of it. A low pass. Fine catch by Schubert. Now Schubert doesn't have great speed, but he'll come across the middle and he'll make the big play just like Bashnagel number 84 will. And of course Schubert is also dynamite if he gets his hands on a punt. He's got a lot of moves. Watts and Bashnagel in a slot left. First and 10 at the 41 yard line. Fifth play action fake to Williams. Under a rush, and Jack Youngblood has him and brings him down at about the 30 yard line. This Ram defensive team held Seattle to minus seven last week. Well, here's Youngblood taking an inside charge. And Fanning coming around behind on what we call a Lex, and Youngblood gets in there. Dennis Lick and Reavy Sorry were boxed out. They both had to turn and watch Youngblood go around them. So it's a loss of nine. It'll make it second and 19 on the Bear 32 yard line. Three nothing Rams. We have 7.53 left in the first quarter. On a draw to Williams, he is stymied just about at the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten one yard. Well, but the Bears unable to move it. Yeah, Phipps usually likes uh, Peyton on the draw. This time he gave it to Washington. That's Torgerson in the red jacket. And he called a good game last week. He has that red, so when he signals the play to Reynolds, number 64, you can see him. Well, it's third and 19. 19 yards to go for the Bears. Ball on the 33-yard line. Mike Phipps trying to move it. 3-0 Los Angeles. Flag on the play, and the pass deep off Osteen's hands, falling behind Ricky Watts. Well, and now we'll get the interpretation of the penalty flag. Phipps was rushed. He had a throw off balance. The ball was almost intercepted. The legal procedure against the Bears. Well, you know, illegal formation, uh, offense, only six men on the line of scrimmage, decline, fourth down. The Bears aren't playing their game today. Their game is to run that football first and pass second. Well, the answer to the question, Bob Parsons is back on the field, number 86. Remember, he was shaken up by Joe Harris on his other punt. Eddie Brown is deep on the Ram 30-yard line. Doug Buffon is picking up strays behind the line. And Parsons gets it away. Brown will have to let it hit the rug. And it will trickle out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. So the Rams have had good field position. They had it on their own 44 and went the rest for a field goal, 27 yards. Now they take over on their own 37. Fifty-two left in the first quarter. Three nothing Rams. They're in possession. First and ten on their own thirty-seven yard line. Denard going left. Drew Hill right. Rutledge with Cullen Bryant and Wendell Tyler back up. Wendell Tyler stymied and dropped. He'll lose about two yards on the play. And the reason for that is the safeties came up and played it tough. It looked like they were blitzing on the play. Doug Plank and Gary Fenson, right up. A loss of one and resting comfortably, Virgil Livers, the smallest but most powerful man. And there's Walter Walk, Payton Walter along Payton. there on the bench with him. So second and 11 from the 36. Cullen Bryant, Wendell Tyler, still in there and Tyler in motion. Cullen Bryant on a draw. Stein along with Hicks hit him and slow him up. So they stack him. And of course, last week, the Rams set an NFL single game high for possession time. They held the ball 45 and a half minutes, almost unheard of. It is. Well, today, 
Rutledge is going to run the ball as much as he can and only pass when he has to, like this situation now. now the Bears are coming in with their nickel defense. There's Charlie Young, the other tight end, along with Terry Nelson, and it's Nelson's turn to play. Rutledge beating out to Cullen Bryant, boxed in by Osborne and dragged down by Hartenstein, number 73, and Hampton, number 99. And that's a good, safe pass to throw. Dump it off to the back. Shouldn't get sacked, even if your protection breaks down. Well, Ken Clark, who's been averaging just under 40 yards a punt, will come in for the Rams, standing on his own 25. Going deep is Steve Schubert, number 85, and up in front of him is Doug Plank, along with Len Waldershy. But Clark on a fourth and six. Gets it away, and Schubert having to retreat and let it go into the end zone. So the Bears will take over first and 10 on their own 20-yard line as you look at Ricky Watts on the sidelines, a rookie split in. Three to nothing in favor of the Rams, 4.52 to go in the first quarter. Tonight on CBS, start your evening with a brand new edition of 60 Minutes, and then Archie Bunker's place one day at a time, Alice the Jeffersons, Trapper John, MD, on CBS Tonight. On CBS Today, it's the Bears and the Rams. First and 10 Bears on their own 20. Peyton, the deep man out of the eye. Fastnagel is wide right and Watts goes left. Second man, Walter Peyton, and riding his back is big Mike Fanning, bringing him down at the 24-yard line. Well, from that last formation, Peyton's favorite play is the toss outside. He's running up the gut straight blocking the Bears have two of the biggest guards in the league they do a great job of pulling and leading Peyton on the sweep we'll, we'll get a chance to see that that last shot was Neil Armstrong the head coach of the Bears on the sidelines so the second and six on the Bear 24 three nothing Rams we have four minutes and 19 seconds left in the first quarter Phipps looking to his right throwing to Bashnagel who makes a fine reception but he ran out Wayne Osteen was there, so a great effort, but all for naught for Brian Bashnagel. We can take another look. Four-year man out of Ohio State who used to play so much on the special teams. Good special team guy, Ben, and a, a real clutch guy. Look at a great catch. He caught the back half of the ball. There's one foot down, but not the other. See, here comes the second Se foot, second and he's foot OB. Have to have both feet in box. So third and six on the Bear 24. Phipps is one for four. He has Schubert going wide right, picked up by Osteen. And they go slot left, Watson Bashnagel. Williams running and bumping into Walter Payton. And Williams, who doesn't carry very often, he's averaged only 34 yards this year for start. The man whom he replaced, Roland Harper, averages a little better than 60 yards. The Bears are opening up very cautiously, and they're, they haven't been able to get their running game going at all, forcing Phipps to throw and allowing the Rams to use that nickel that they do so well with. So Bob Parsons under some heat from Cromwell. Nolan Cromwell blocked it. Jim Jodat picked it up and scored the touchdown. And we don't see any flag. Nobody, nobody blocked Cromwell at all. He came in there scot-free. I also think that Parsons was a little slow in getting the ball off. It was just like you, you practice. Watch this. We told you he had only four blocked in eight years, and here comes Cromwell, takes number it, 21. Takes it right off his foot. And here's Jodat, who just came off the injured reserve list. What a break for Jim Jodat out of Carthage. And the Rams are leading 9 nothing, and the Bears are in shock. Now, that was a combination of nobody blocked Cromwell. Parsons probably just a little bit slow because of the injury. Corral trying to make it 10 to nothing, Los Angeles. The spot by Cromwell, and he can't handle it. Look out here. It is finally picked up and got away. It gets away again, but I think the whistle blew it dead. Corral tried to pick it up. Spivey almost picked it up, and then they blew it dead. You take another look at it. It Low went right snap. under the hands yeah. of Nolan Cromwell. Sla snap. Snap was on the on the ground. 
That's Spivey. Here's Livers, and Livers stripped him, and then the ball was blown dead. Nolan Cromwell blocking Bob Parsons' punt. Jim Jodat ran 13 yards with the leather, and the Rams are leading nine to nothing. The crowd trying to stimulate the Bears into action now, and for the first time today, they are highly audible as Frank Corral kicks off deep into the end zone. Len Waldershide decides to take it out from three, four yards deep, and he is necktied at the 20-yard line. So the Bears will put it in play for the third time from their 20-yard line. And Neil Armstrong wondering how to get his ball club going. Well, good fans in Chicago, good loyal fans. Uh, this is a great sports city and good people here. And they'll, they'll stick with their Bears. And that extra point that was missed could be a big play. Washington, meanwhile, leading St. Louis 17 to 7 halftime. And the Bears in St. Louis might go to the wire for a playoff berth. And Buffalo shading the Jets 7 6 in the third. Mike Phipps, first and 10 on the Bear 20 yard line. Peyton and Williams are split back of him. Phipps throwing over Youngblood and behind Peyton, who got one hand on it, but that's all. And it was Jack Youngblood and Mike Fanning putting on the pressure. And they aren't, they aren't going to make a living throwing against this Ram defense and letting those guys rush the passer. Actually, on that block punt, the Rams overloaded the left side. Nobody picked up 21. Parsons, there, there's a, the left side's overloaded. He's just a little slow. Cromwell got off for this snap. Joe Dat, what a big play for him. His first game coming back. Buffon had blocked Joe Dat, but he couldn't get Cromwell as well, and so it was the busted punt. So it is second and 10 from the 20 for Mike Fifth. And lobbing it down the middle low and behind the tight end, Greg Latta. Dev Elmendorf picking it up on a bounce. This is what Seattle did last week. They got behind early. Then they had a throw. Phipps is rushed here. He's thrown off, off his back foot. See him go down in the delivery sack. The ball is, is short, wobbling. Jack Reynolds just did hit his right hand. Otherwise, Latta might have been able to come back and get that pass anyway. So it was a good defensive play by the middle linebacker, Jack Reynolds. Third and 10 from the 20. And Mike Phipps, Walter Payton and company sputtering here in the early going. We have 3-11 left in the first quarter. 9-0 Los Angeles. And Phipps down the left side. He's got Schubert to the 40. There's a flag on the play. He's to the 10, to the 5, in the end zone. And now let's see. There's a flag. I believe it is, it's against the Rams. It's against the Rams, the way the Bears are reacting. An 80-yard touchdown pass from Mike Fitz to Steve Schubert, but now, oh, wait, wait a, a minute. minute. Wait a minute. A legal procedure, I believe, will be against the Bears. The Bears were leaping in the air as if they had gotten confirmation it was against the Rams, but now the second call, it is definitely against Chicago. Tough break. Phipps did a good job. He was rushed, and he just threw that ball up, threw it a little bit longer than he wanted to, but Vasnagel ran underneath it. That's a tough break. Big break for the Illegal for the motion, number 80, offense. The man in motion was moving toward the line of scrimmage at the snap. Still third down. And, of course, that is the rookie who was running the wrong way towards the line, Ricky Watts, and what pressure on him. And his first start of the year, and he's playing the split end, the weak side end, when he's been a flanker all of his life. This is his second year in the league. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Chicago Bears and the National Football League is prohibited. So a crushing blow for the Bears. They lose an 80-yard touchdown pass, and they lose five yards as well. There he is, Ricky Watts, the rookie out of Tulsa, and boy, how he must feel. Third and 15 from the 15. Here comes Walter Payton. Youngblood can't get him, but the rest of the Rams do, and it's Nolan Cromwell who brought him down at the 10-yard line. So they lose 10 yards instead of picking up an 80-yard touchdown. At that has happened so many times where we've seen the motion man going forward at the snap. 
the Walter Payton submarine by Nolan Cromwell and Bob Parsons who had one blocked and it went for a Ram touchdown now asked to kick one out of the end zone Eddie Brown is standing on the bare 46 Rams are not coming and it is a weak punt and it hits and gets across the 40 the Bears will let it roll and it will die at the 49 yard line so Parsons Roots it out to the 49, and the Rams again in great field yeah, position. Poor kick, but he got about a 15-yard roll that helped him. Detroit, after t being licked by the Bears last week, trying to bounce back, and they are leading Tampa Bay, as you see, 7-3 to three at the half. Oakland and Houston all knotted up 14 at halftime. So the Rams have it first and 10 on the Bear 49. Cullen Bryant, Wendell Tyler out of the eye. Hill and Bernard, the wide receivers. Play action fake by Rutledge. And he's going to run. And dragged down by Campbell at the 45-yard line, and he fell forward for an additional yard. Well, Rut Rutledge did the smart thing. Rather than throw that ball, everybody was covered. He ran right up the gut, and you never lose many yards running up the gut as a quarterback. Jeff Rutledge is the first rookie quarterback to start for the Rams since 1964 when Bill Munson started. He's also the fifth rookie quarterback to start a game this year. Only one won his first game. That was Phil Sim. Second and five from the 44 on a draw to Cullen Bryant. He gets about to the 40-yard line. They push him back, and he had to cross the 40 for the first down. He had to get just shy of the 39. All right, let's take a look at the look at the bear linebackers. There's 54. Picks fighting off the blocker. Coming in to help on a tackle. You know, usually when a rookie quarterback wins his first game, it's because of great defense and kicking. It usually isn't his sole performance that makes the victory. He's had marvelous field position. Here he is third and about a yard for a first down. Wendell Tyler going outside, has the first down and then some. He's inside the 35. Plank and Fensick, the safety men coming over to bring him down. Tight end Terry Nelson, a key figure always. Let's let's watch uh, Terry Nelson's block. 83. He's stay, staying with the defensive man, taking him outside, staying right with him. Hampton controlled him. Tyler cut back. First and ten on the bear 33. Campbell faking a blitz. They pitch back to Cullen Bryant, and now Campbell has him, but he gets away, and he is finally dragged down by Plank just shy of the 25-yard line. So Cullen Bryant, along with Wendell Tyler, the workhorse, Bryant has carried only four times and Tyler five, and that's the end of the first quarter with the score, the Rams nine, and the Chicago Bears nothing. Fensick did a complete pirouette on Colin Bryant to escape the block, and Gary Fensick turned to play around. Good play for Gary. Yes. Well, you know, the, the bear safeties are very physical. They may be the most physical safeties and hardest hitting safeties in football. But they like to blitz in here and dog. They've been laying back. They haven't done that to date. I think they're going to have to get up there a little tighter and blitz to stop this running game. Just enough for the first down for the Rams to keep the drive alive. First and 10 on the Bear 23. Rutledge setting up. Osborne will get him from behind at the 31-yard line. Jim Osborne. You know, Ben, I, I felt that Osborne all... all all along, I thought this guy is very, very underrated. He's he's good against the run. He can rush the passer. Uh, he's a fine football player. Doesn't make mistakes. Runs stunts very well with uh, number 82, Alan Page. And he showed his ability right there. That was a big play for them. A loss of eight on the sack, so it is second and 18 from the Bear 31. Denard is left and Drew Hill wide right. Rutledge handing to Tyler, and he swallowed up immediately. Our man Osborne again. 
There's Lawrence McCutcheon trying to keep his hands warm in those big mittens. Had a good, had a good game last week. And on the other side of the field, Walter Payton. And of course, what valuable hands and legs on that man. You can stop that guy for three quarters and he can break loose in the last quarter and beat you. He's that type of football Trying player. Trying to keep his hands warm. So it is third and 17 on two big plays by Jim Osborne. Rutledge just did get the pass away, broken up. He was going to Nelson and it was defended by Gaines. Well, Rutledge. Rutledge has pretty good pressure on him. He throws the ball off balance. Terry Nelson's running a crossing pattern and Gaines is right there. Ball went through his hands. Could have been intercepted. Frank Corral's longest field goal this year, 49 yards. He's kicked five outside the 40-yard line. Right now, Nolan Cromwell will spot it just about at the 37-yard line. So it's a 47-yard field goal attempt for Frank Corral. That's Nolan Cromwell who blocked the punt and the touchdown by Joe Dow. And this one is blocked. It is fielded by Plank at the 20, and he is dragged down by Canada Hill at about the 24-yard line. We can the, take a look and see if Virgil Livers comes flying in, number 24. Let's well, see. The staff was just a little bit low. There he is. The little man a little bit doing a slow big job. And getting that off, that allowed the kick to be blocked. yard line after that blocked field goal by Virgil Livery. Williams and Payton stacked up in the eye back of Phipps. Second man Walter Payton and he bumps into Jack Youngblood squirmed away from Youngblood but just found another pile of Rams at the 25. Well they they haven't run him outside from the eye. I, I think that's his favorite play in the in the two guards. Noah Jackson and Reba Sori do a good job of pulling. I think that play has a chance to be successful against this Ram defense. They have to get Peyton going and make some yardage running so that Phipps can pass if he has to pass. That's a good look at the first round draft choice of the Bears. Dan Hampton who apparently has rib bruises at least. He would appear to be in pain on that shot. Second and eight from the 26 for Mike Phipps and the Bears. Williams with Peyton blocking on Brzezinski. And it is Williams out to about the 24. So little Walter putting a block on the right side linebacker, Bob Brzezinski. Well, Pey Peyton's a complete football player. He can run, block, catch. There's Peyton's block at the top of the screen, the left of the screen. Eddie Brown finally coming over to make the tackle and moves the ball out to the 32 where it is third and two for Chicago. Phipps is one for six on the ground. They have rushed for 17 yards. Yeah. Watts has come out and we're checking the 32nd clock. Mix up on the substitutions and Phipps did the right thing. Took a timeout. Otherwise it would have been penalized. It was down to six seconds. So after they had consumed 24 seconds on the 32nd clock. They have reset it. They alertly call a timeout. So we have 12 16 to the half, 9 0 Los Angeles. He in the back, and they tell us they're just going to hold him out a series, and he should be okay. Third and two from the Bear, 32, 9 0 Rams. Play action fake to Williams. Peyton has gone out. The pass is deep and no good for back. Defending was Eddie Brown. Well, that's a, a low percentage completion. Third and two, you're not going to hit many bombs. Uh, he was covered all the way. No chance. The, the play action cut down the rush, but Eddie's right with him. Right there with him. Might have had it if he made a great catch. And they threw with two tight ends in there on third and two. So now it's fourth down and Bob Parsons getting his snap and punting it to Eddie Brown. He'll have to retreat. Brown takes it on his own 20 yard line and Len Waldershide trips him up. The Waldershide hit him at the ankles and then Schubert fell on top of him and the Rams will put it in play now on their own 25 yard line. Say Monday night on CBS. 
starts a dramatic episode of The White Shadow, starring Ken Howard. Then an hour of great comedy with MASH, continues with WKRP in Cincinnati, and Ed Asner stars as Lou Grant. It's all on CBS Monday night. First and ten for the Rams. They're leading 9-0, the ball on their own 26. The running backs are Cullen Bryant and Wendell Tyler. Rutledge pitching to Tyler. Bryant riding his man Campbell outside, and there goes Tyler. Pushed out of bounds by Fensick, but they're going to spot him that he stepped out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Well, we, uh, ben, we said that earlier. Uh, <coughs> the Bears' defense is not penetrating. They're not getting across. Uh, the safeties are quite delayed, slow in getting up there, and a guy like Tyler can run wide and hurt him. There's there's no force. Campbell, number 59, turned the play in, but Doug Plank could not get over to make the tackle, and so a big run, and it is first and 10 on the 46-yard line. Rutledge to Cullen Bryant, Kent Hill blocking on Tommy Hart. But he did get across midfield, did Bryant, before Schmidt and Campbell brought him down. Now that time they, they dogged the strong safety, Fensick, but the Bears happened to run away from it, ran to the weak side. The saddest thing of tongue and pen, what might have been in the life of Steve Schubert. He caught his first pass of the year. It looked like an 80-yard touchdown, and it was called back Ricky Watts in a legal motion. And Schubert has to think about that. Second and two from the 46. Wendell Tyler with Peacock and Hill blocking. However, now, he should pick up the first down easily. They played that a lot better. They got across. The safety was up there. They had good pursuit. Uh, Neil Armstrong told me it was a tremendous blow to lose Scott for this ball game. He was their most dependable receiver, their deep threat. It's a, quite a burden on a guy like Watts starting his first game and playing the opposite side. First and 10 on the Bear 42 for the Rams. They're leading 9-0. We have 10-34 to the half. Pitch back to Wendell Tyler. Upended by Plank, and he flies through the air to the 40-yard line. Doug Plank hit him back in about the 45, and Neil Armstrong still waiting for some good news. Yes, they, they haven't. The only big play they made was uh, was called back, although they, they blocked a field goal. I have to take that back. They made two big plays. They blocked a field goal, and the, the other big play was called back. Right now, until the offense gets going, it's up to the defense to make a big play and turn the game around. That's Reggie Dawes trying to keep his feet warm on the Rams sideline. Second and eight on the Bear 40. Cullen Bryant on the draw, boxed in by Fensick, and look at how he just kept on driving right over Hicks. And, and the way he was carrying the ball, you're never going to fumble. Two hands on the ball. Kerry uh, Nelson and Tommy Hart going head-to-head -head there. Nelson's handling them. Dennis Hare coming around and sealing off. Two hands on the ball. Look at Bryant's protecting that football. And he powers through. Very close for the first down. They're going to measure. We have 9.42 to the half. First down. On the sidelines, big Noah Jackson taking in that measurement. The man they call Buddha. And Nolan Cromwell, who blocked the punt that was fielded by Joe Dat for a 13-yard touchdown return. Elmendorf, Osteen, Justin, the rest of the Ram secondary resting now because the Ram offense has it first and 10 on the Bear 32. Straight hit by Cullen Bryant, and they stack him up at about the 31-yard line. He might have gained a yard. The reason we saw Tommy Hart in there in that previous play is that they use him in a passing situation quite a bit. He's a good pass rusher, as we know from his days with the 49ers. By the way, I like the, the two first-round picks the Bears selected, uh, Al Harris and, and Hampton. I think both guys have a chance to develop into good football players. Harris out of Arizona State, Hampton out of Arkansas, trying to rebuild the Bears and get them back. Second and eight, the ball just shy of the 30. Williams is there. A 
a give to Eddie Hill, but I think the 30-second clock had run out on rookie Jeff Rutledge. So that'll be a five-yard delay a game. Rutledge is an interesting study. The first rookie to start for the Rams in 15 years, the fifth rookie delay. quarterback Offense. to start Still this year. Sims, Steve Fuller, Jack Thompson, Jeff Comlow, and only Sims won his first start. But what a heritage, a quarterback of the campus of Alabama. He's the sixth in the last 15 years. With Joe Namath, Steve Sloan, Ken Stabler, Scott Hunter, and Richard Todd. Second and 13 from the 35. Eddie Hill and Cullen Bryant, and both backs go out. Rutledge with time, completes it to Terry Nelson, and he steps out of bounds, but he also picked up the first down yes, at about did. the 20-yard line. Good, good protection. Watch some blocking Alan Page on this now. 82. Takes an outside rush, which has always been his strong for it. Hill staying right with him, pushing him outside, which the rules allow you to use your hands. So first and 10 on the pass to Terry Nelson on the bear 20 yard line and the Rams dominating the half leading nine nothing. Here goes Colin Bryant inside Hara and two bears swallow him up. Campbell was the first man to make contact and then slowly getting up behind him is Alan Page. Second and eight from the 18. You know very, very similar to date from last week's game with Seattle, isn't it? It certainly is. One team just taking over and dominating the ball game. And it's the visiting team in each occasion. The Bears coming off a big win against Detroit. The Rams equally big over Seattle. And it's been all Los Angeles, although the Bears had an apparent touchdown, an 80-yard pass, fall back. Second and eight from the 18. Rutledge play action fake to Tyler and throwing to Terry and the tight end is all alone jogs in for the touchdown and a flag it might be on Gary Fensick we'll see well a, a blow in a, a blow in coverage of a, a, a play action pace play action pass where the, the tight end comes across nobody covered him here it is or Nelson this will be his third touchdown pass that, of the that, year there's the fake he's wide open he just kind of trots in now watch Gary Fensick. When he gets in the end right. zone, Fensick will kind of shoulder it. Fensick hits him late after he scored. The penalty's on Fensick. Jack Youngblood talking to referee Dick Jorgensen. Well, the late hit on, uh, on, on Nelson. Fensick hitting uh, so it'll Jerry be Nelson. A personal foul, no doubt, tacked off on the next kickoff. 7.45 to the half. Corral trying to make it 16 to nothing. Got it through. And it is very quiet, even though Soldier Field is sold out. With seven minutes and 45 seconds to the half, it is all Los Angeles, 16 to nothing. Terry Nelson, that's his first touchdown of his young NFL career, and the Rams responding very well to his leadership, leading 16-0. When you have aggressive safeties, they go for the play action. That's what happened on that play. The kickoff went from the 50-yard line. So in other words, instead of going to 35, they tacked it on. And from midfield, the Rams kicked it. But as you said, Terry Nelson was kind of lollygagging into yeah. the end zone. I think that just irritated yeah. fencing. He kind of coaxed, coaxed that because he, he could have scored easily. And he, the last five yards, he walked in. And when, when your running game is going, the safety's coming up. They're playing run. They get fooled on the pass. Frank Corral and Bob Lee looking on as the Bears put it in play. First and 10 on their own. 20-yard line. And it's Williams grabbed by Reynolds at the 23 and drops him just shy of the 25-yard line. Jack Reynolds right on his nose. Well, old Hacksaw Reynolds, let's watch him on this play. He reads the play. He gave the ball to the first man, 22, Williams. Jack's right with him, got his arms wrapped around him plays a good game every week. Jack Reynolds studies football. He's the type of guy every coach wants to have. Second and five on the 25 for the Bears and Mike Phipps. Walter 
Payton tripped up. Mike Fanning bumped him along with Jack Reynolds at the 25, and Payton fell forward for an additional two to the 27-yard line. Well, for the Bears to get back in this, this game, they're going to have to make some big plays, and Walter Payton is the key to their entire offense. Third and three on the Bear 27-yard line. The Rams leading 16 to nothing, coming off a shutout of Seattle and trying to give the Bears an equally bad time. Bashnagel is wide right, and Peyton is on a wing, so Williams all alone behind Phipps. And Peyton going out, but it's a short pass received at the 31-yard line by Mike Cobb, and he's dragged down by Dave Elmendorf, and that's the first down, and a sarcastic cheer coming up from the crowd. They haven't had much to cheer about. Well, they get it out to the Bear 32-yard line, first and 10. It's a sellout crowd and a rather quiet, somewhat upset crowd at the moment. First and 10 Bears on their own 32. Williams carrying, and he is stacked up shy of the 35-yard line. For Williams, he has now carried as many times as Peyton. Peyton has carried seven times for eight yards. Williams has carried seven times for 18 yards. Well, they know that the Ram defense is key in Peyton. They're trying to use Williams as a threat in there and Peyton as a decoy, but you, you can't overdo that. You got to go with your best. Second and seven on the 35 yard line. Here comes Walter Payton on a sweep behind Noah Jackson, and it's stacked up by Jack Youngblood and Jim Youngblood. On the sideline, big Dennis Hara talking to his coach, Ray Malavese. In your picture now, Ron Will. Yeah, it was coach. That first, that's the first time we've had a chance to see those guards pull, but the Rams stacked them up. Payton carrying the ball, and... Noah Jackson and Reba Sori pulling. They, they, they're big mobile guys. It's just a beauty to see them pull and plop. Well, it's third and four on the Bear 38-yard line. Phipps looking down the right side, and his arm is deflected in the act of passing. It was intended for Williams. Well, yeah. We, we said this that if you can't you can't make a living throwing against this this Ram defense. The Bears is now two for nine. Yeah. Watch his arm get hit here as he throws. Right here. Yeah, Jack Youngblood, Jack Youngblood him. hit his right arm. So Bob Parsons standing on his own 25 yard line under some heat but he gets it away. Deep is Eddie Brown calling for a fair catch, and it takes a bare bounce and rolls down to the 16-yard line, almost the 15-yard line, where the Rams will put it in play. First and 10. We have four minutes and 14 seconds to the half. Rams 16, Bears nothing. put it in play first and 10 from their own 16 yard line four minutes and 14 seconds to the half and the crowd wants the defense now to throttle Los Angeles because the offense can't do a thing Ryan and Tyler behind Rutledge Wendell Tyler grabbed by Hampton and finally down at the 19 yard line by Gary Fensick well you know Vince, the Bears defense ever since George Hallis formed this team has had a lot of pride, a very physical unit, a hard-hitting defensive team. Now, the, the defense is going to have to turn this game around if they're going to get back into it. Yeah, because the Bear offense, they have rushed for only 17 yards and passed for 15. Second and six from the 20 for the Rams. On a draw to Cullen Bryant, he gets out to about the 22. They're going to have to stop the run and force Rutledge to pass. And, of course, for the Rams with a rookie quarterback, things could not have turned out better. They've given him a comfortable lead, and now they can just kind of nurse him through the game. Exactly. All he has to do is be very conservative. There's Jack Youngblood, very happy. He just rushed the passer and made an incomplete pass in third down. So they're in the driver's seat right now, third and three. Third and three on the Ram 22-yard line. 
it's a slot left. Denard and Hill over there. Tyler in motion. Pitch back to Bryant. And the Bears stack him up. There would appear to be more enthusiasm yes. on the Bear defense and on the offense. Yes, it is. The, the, the Bear defense, as, as we mentioned, was fourth coming into this game in the NFC, so that's a pretty good defense. And these fans are good fans. They know their football. Chicago fans are very intelligent on all the ramifications of pro football. Well, it's fourth and one on the Ram 29. Steve Schubert is deep at his 35-yard line, and Ken Clark will be punting for the Rams on his own 15. He might go for a block here. He gets his punt away, a low-line drive. Schubert will have to let it just bounce until the steam runs out of it. They did. They, they went for a block and forced Clark to kick in a hurry and kick the line drive. They're going to spot it at the Bear 34. So on the exchange of punts, the Bears gain 14 yards and put it in play first and 10 on their own 34. You know, as a coach right here, what you want is a big play and at least get on the board at halftime. At even three points gives your team a big lift going into the locker room. And the crowd well bundled, although it is not that cold right now. 34 degrees at the start of the game. First and 10 on the Bear 34. Williams and Peyton are running backs. Play action fake to Peyton. And the pass is to Watts, and he's out of bounds at midfield for the first down. That should help Watts. He's got the speed to go deep, and that's why he's in there. Bears trying to get on the move and get on the scoreboard. 16 North Angeles. Announce. So with a minute and 58 to the half, the Bears trying to get into Ram territory for the first time today. New Orleans tied with the Rams for first in the West, leading San Francisco handily 17 to three. That game played in New Orleans. Slot left, Bashnagel is inside Watts. Play action fake again to Peyton. And the pass completed to Watts. He and Nolan Cromwell are on each other, and that's the 35-yard line and a first down. Smart football. They're, they're faking the play action because they know the Rams are worried about the Bears' running game. Good football by Phipps. Deepest penetration outside of that callback 80 yard. And Phipps cranking up and throwing off the hands of Osteen, deflected by Elmendorf out of bounds, intended for Brian Bashnagel. Almost intercepted by Youngblood. Let, let's see if we can see that again. Brian Osteen. There it is. Very fortunate this was an intercept. Faked, it, faked the late, which is a good fake. Osteen, yeah, Osteen, there it is. 53-33. Thought is second and 10 on the Ram 35-yard line. Watson and Bashnagel go left. Latta is the tight end on the right side, and they split Williams and Peyton. Over the middle, and a diving reception by Bashnagel. There's a flag on the play. Bashnagel making the reception inside the 25 to the Ram 22. He's a clutch guy. Typical Ohio State athlete. Gives you everything he has. Watch this catch. That's all Phipps could do. A holding call against the Rams declined. Look at They'll good, pick up the pass. Look at a good job Phipps did on that. They're right in on him. They dog. So the Bears, for the first time today, have moved deep into Ram territory. They have first and 10 on the Ram 22. The only other time they thought they were in Ram territory was the 80-yard apparent touchdown pass to Schubert that was called back. Watts left and Bashnagel right. Phipps under heat from Dreyer. Completes it to Watts again at the seven-yard line. Perfect timing. Three big passes to the kid who was so embarrassed, remember? It was his mistake that caused the Schubert touchdown to be nullified. Now he's making up for it in a hurry. And this ball was thrown when his back was turned right on the money, right on the button. 
the Bears are calling their plays with the tight ends. There's 87 and 88. Latta and Cobb are coming in and out, calling the plays. So it's first and goal from the seven yard line. Phipps has now gone for 13 attempts, completed six of them for 79 yards. Rutledge, leading comfortably, has only thrown the ball a half a dozen times and completed three. And as far as the rushing is concerned, Wendell Tyler has averaged six yards a carry. Bryant has averaged better than four and a half. For the Bears, Peyton has carried eight times for only 11 yards. So Laverne Torgerson, whom you just saw, has been sending in an yeah. iron wall. And you know what I like about this drive, then, is that every play was preceded by a fake, whether it was a draw or a play action, and that's good football because of the Bears' offense. They run the ball first. That's what they do best. And this is bothering the Rams' defensive rush. You know, the Bears have scored more points in three games since Mike Phipps re-won the quarterback position, 90, than they did in six previous games behind Bob Avellini and Vince Evans. So the crowd came here expecting to see the Bears score. Well, they got 116. They get back in this ball game, and the score here would make it interesting in the second half. So the Rams 16, the Bears nothing, with a minute and 16 to the half. Phipps and the Bears come out. First and goal from the seven. Schubert and Bashnagel go left. And Phipps is going to put it up again. Fires a line drive. Touchdown, Delvin Willig. There's a flag on the play as Williams caught the pass. Hold everything. Are the Bears going to be burned again? Dave Williams caught that line drive, and it's a personal foul against the Rams. So the touchdown counts, and the Bears are back in the game. A another quick pass. The Rams are dogging. There's Brzezinski coming in. On the kickoff. Push point. An ang here it is again from the end zone. Phipps setting up to throw, watching number 22, Williams, right over the middle, wide open. His coverage is 53, Youngblood, man for man on, on Williams. Or Dave Williams, his second touchdown pass of the year. Now Bob Thomas with the spot, the kick, and it is good. Uh, the Rams leading the Bears now 16 to 7. The penalty will be tacked on for the kickoff, so we've had two of those now. Remember when Terry Nelson scored, there was a penalty against the Bears, and the Rams kicked off from midfield. So with a minute and 12 left to the half, it is somewhat of a rejuvenated ball game. The Rams 16 and the Bears 7. And the key to it, for the first time that the Bears really had any kind of field position, they started on their own 34, and three passes to Ricky Watt set up what turned out to be the touchdown pass to Dave Williams. And you know another thing that Phipps showed me, he's a good two-minute quarterback. He's a very disciplined two-minute quarterback. That was a beautiful two-minute quarterback drill for the Bears. Another thing for Mike Phipps, he not only is 7 for 14, he has a string going. He has now thrown 54 consecutive passes without an interception. Usually, when we say something like that, the Bam. Next, yeah. Yeah, well, we already started the game by saying Bob Parsons had only four yeah. blocks yeah. in his life, and immediately it was blocked. Does that happen in baseball, too? It happens in everything. <laughs> So with a minute and 12, as you see some of the Rams on the sideline, again, the kickoff from the 50 because of the penalty. The Rams are expected an onside kick. They have everybody up. Lonnie Perrin will from midfield. And he's going to thump it. And it'll go into the end zone, and Drew Hill will watch it leave town. Nice deep kick. That's why he's kicking off. Well, from the 50-yard line, you yeah, certainly expect him to kick it. They usually, sometimes they have Thomas kicking off, but they, they, they like Perrin because he kicks him a little bit deeper. So it'll be first and 10 for the Rams on their own 20-yard line. 16 to 7 Rams. But, of course, it still hangs over Soldier Field, a picture of Steve Schubert on that 80-yard touchdown pass that was called back. Now about Rutledge, he has Wendell Tyler and Cullen Bryant. 
Drew Hill is right. Preston Denard is left. Cullen Bryant. And Cullen Bryant out to the 30-yard line. A bruising runner. Doug Plank finally brought him down. Then I'm going to say something right now. Unless the Bears adjust their defense at halftime, the Rams are going to run that football and control the football. They're, they're eating up the defense with their running game. Well, they picked up a first down on that effort by Brian. First and 10 from the 30. Rutledge to Bryant, and he spins across the 35 to the 37. So he picks up another seven yards with 34 seconds left. They don't have to worry about Rutledge throwing the ball too much today. They have to stop the run first and the draws second and, and passes third. Rams calling a timeout. They're leading 16 to 7 with 31 seconds to go at the half. And because of Colin Bryant and Wendell Tyler, they've moved the ball out to the 37. That tandem team, Tyler has carried for 63 yards, averaging just about six yards a carry. And Bryant has carried for 64 yards. And the one-two punch for the Bears has been missing. Peyton for only 11 yards, Williams for 18. Well, Peyton's still the type of guy you can stop him for a half. He can come back and have two 70-yard runs. Another big plus for the Bears today is that they hurt the Detroit score. Detroit's leading Tampa Bay. And, of course, the Rams get a nudge. They find out that New Orleans is leading San Francisco, exactly. so the Rams have to win the state even. Second and three from the 37. Denard left. Smith right. Wendell Tyler. Grabbed from behind by Hampton. He had Bryant and Hara out in front blocking for him. As far as timeouts are concerned, the Rams have just used up one. Uh, they will we'll officially check it now as the clock is running down. Yeah, they're letting the clock run. So they're going to let it run out. The Rams getting out in front of a 16 to nothing lead. The Bears finally getting an offensive drive. They went 66 yards. And the key, the touchdown pass to Dave Williams. And at least they're on the boards now trailing by nine. One of the things that could very well come back in the second half to be so important. Remember when Virgil Livers blocked a field goal attempt by Frank Corral of the Rams. And as George pointed out at the time, that could very well stand up. And now as we look at the game, if the Bears can come back with another touchdown, suddenly they are very much in it. Right. I didn't think that the Rams could run against the Bears defense like they have today. The, the Bears defense is a, is a good defense. It's a physical defense, but if, if they don't make some adjustments, they're going to be in trouble the second half. Now, when you say if they don't make adjustments, are there any obvious adjustments well, that you can see? Uh, there's, there's very little penetration on the strong side or weak side. Uh, guys like Tyler are, are able to turn up field before anybody gets across. Uh, the, the two safeties have to be up there, whether they're dogging or not dogging, to stop that wide stuff. And then uh, Cullen Bryant's been able to run up the gut. Uh, I, they must have known coming into this ball game that Rutledge was not going to beat them for they had to stop the running game. They, they made some adjustments here at the end that looks more like the bear defense that that I had expected. And, and, then, and Phipps has to get his running game going a little bit with Peyton. Well, it's halftime. You see our score, 16 to 7. That's the end of the first half, and the score ran 16 and Bear 7. The Rams are leading 16 to 7. Lonnie Perrin out of the University of Illinois will be kicking off for the Bears. Deep is Eddie Brown, flanked by Eddie Hill and Elvis Peacock. The kickoff will be handled by Drew Hill at the 10 yard line. Drew to the 15, to the 20, and out of bounds at about the 22 yard line. And the Rams put it in play, first and 10 on their own 22. George. The last time the Rams had the ball, it turned out to be a key because the Bear defense stiffened and then went on to get themselves a touchdown. Yes, it's going to be very interesting to see how the Bears defense stops the Rams running game. The Rams made 150 yards running the first half, the Bears 30. First and 10 on the Rams 
22-yard line. It's Bryant and Tyler. With Drew Hill and Preston Denard. Wendell Tyler. Inside a block by Colin Bryant, but he's dragged down from behind. Now, just about at the line of scrimmage. Then they did a, a good thing there. 45, Fensick was right up there. Even though he didn't make the play, he forced the runner to cut inside. Turned him in. none of that in the first half. Very little. Well, second and nine on the 23 for the Rams, leading 16 to seven. Terry Nelson, the tight end, goes on the left side. And off to Bryant, and they've got him. And the man who got him is Jim Osborne. Well, we think he's very underrated. He's a good all-around football player. This first series on defense, you've heard me say this a hundred times, when you're behind, the first series on defense is so vital. You gotta stop them, you gotta make them punt, and then the first series on offense, you gotta take the ball down and put some points on the board. Well, a big play for Jeff Rutledge now. Third and 10 from the Ram 22, and Rutledge's gonna put it up. And it's to Wendell Tyler. Ellis has him after he leaped over Libers. And he did not get a first down by any means. I'll tell you one more thing. When they don't dog, Rutledge has good protection. He has time to throw. They're going to have to dog to put a little more pressure on him. Well, the Rams situation. are stymied on the sidelines as they talk things over with Ray Malavese. And Ken Clark will be punting to Steve Schubert, who, by the way, has three touchdown returns in the last five years. He returned 177 yards for a touchdown last week. He's number 85. Clark is punting, and it's to Schubert's right. It's going to hit on the 35-yard line and die in about the 32. So the Bears will put it in play on their own 32. When they went for their touchdown, they started on their 34. 